Hi guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan, and we're looking at a, uh, a video here of our auction purchase of a 1300cc Mini Cooper, and so that's the fast version of the Mini, and this one is quite special because of a conversion over to a Mark 1 style, or Mach 1 style, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Okay, so the Mini is one of my all-time favorite cars. It was my first car. This one's way, way better than my first car. So let's take a look and see what we have. And so this one has unknown mileage on it. The gauges show one, um, 1,731 kilometers, but the gauges have been changed to a Mark I style center gauge. And so that's probably not the accurate mileage on it. Funny thing about Mini is, is the mileage doesn't really matter so much as the condition of them. Even the newest ones are now more than 15 years old. This one is a 1991 and so quite old, but it is a Cooper model and 1300 cc carbureted engine which makes it quite a rare model actually a lot of people don't realize that the coopers are rare but especially the final coopers before they went over to fuel injection now you can hear a little bit of rattling that comes from the spring here nothing to worry about if you look at the engine it could possibly be a modified engine it is still running a single carburetor but it does have a red painted block and the minis usually don't come with red painted blocks and so most likely this engine is not the original engine in the car seems like it runs really well and i have driven this for about 15 minutes on the road the vehicle drives wonderfully i love the way the minis drive but this is one of the best driving ones that i have ever been in it's just so nice feels way better than your standard mini does and good too because this one was rather on the expensive side as far as minis go Okay, this is a model with AC in it. It doesn't have power brakes or power steering, so not really much in here. There's just a radiator with, comes with two fans, one on the inside, one on the outside. Comes with a carburetor in the back. It is not a cross flow designed head. The intake is on the top and the uh, exit exhaust comes out the bottom. Uh, there are, I think, two intake and three exhaust. And then the two intakes split into the four cylinders for the engine. Pretty easy to work on these in most things. Some things like the heater piping that goes in here is really annoying. Looks like it's been replaced at some point to an aftermarket silicone hose kit. And so that's nice. That's probably not something that has to be changed pretty soon. Alternator is right here at the front and has a little splash plate here that they started putting on after that the vehicle had been manufactured for a few years because they found out that the water was messing up with the belt there. Aftermarket coil. And uh, I guess that's about it, 1300 cc. It doesn't put out a lot of horsepower, but the engine feels really nice and fast. Stock, these ones put out, I think, in the range of like 67, 68 horsepower. And then the regular minis are between like 30, well, for the most part, between 35 and 45 or so. This one feels like it's probably in the range of about 80 horsepower or so, but considering it's only 650 kilograms, that's quite enough horsepower in order for it to feel nice and, and nippy. Okay, so let's take a look at the auction sheet. I do have a lot to say about this car, and so, uh, pardon me, this is gonna be the boring part. 1991 Rover Mini, 1.3 Cooper, 1300 cc, and then you have to look at the VIN number here. You're looking for double N's here if you're looking for a Cooper model. Sometimes sellers sell the Coopers without knowing that they're Coopers, so look at that. Otherwise, it doesn't have the two N's. Okay, auction grade 3.5, interior C. I think they were a little bit harsh on it. It looks to be better than that, in my opinion, except for one point on the body, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so it says, oh, what's this? Mark 1 conversion. Okay, let me stop here to tell you a little bit about this. Mark 1 were the very first generation, and they look quite a bit different. Doing the conversion can be difficult, depending on how much they decide to do. So let's just see what there is. First off is the grill that looks like a mustache. Notice how the grill, instead of curling in, it comes down here and all the way out so that's the mark one grill this insert here fits the mark one but that's not the original look of the mark one because see you have these little knobbies on them this is an aftermarket kit that a lot of people put on the ones that they're going to race you just unscrew this and unscrew that with your fingers and then you can take the grill out which is really handy if you need to go and fix things now i will say this one was done very well with the mark one conversion kit because they did stuff like this this is how you open the hood and on Mark 1 and 2 and I think 3, the hood release was on the outside of the car. This car originally wouldn't have come with that so they removed the hood release and made it right here 
with a little splash guard there to make sure that uh, inside doesn't get wet. And so it's attention to detail like that that really makes this car shine. Okay, the fenders are obviously not Mark 1. They are aftermarket to the fullest, and more on that later. Fender mirrors here instead of your regular ones that go here. Tiny little uh, windshield wipers. Mark 1 also has some interior things, but I'm going to show you the back here, and this is kind of the biggest thing. You see these tiny little tail lights? Usually the Mini has tail lights that are usually twice the size of this. And this is one of the hardest things to convert because if you take a look, all the sheet metal around here needs to be custom made. And so the kit will come with the tail lights as well as the sheet metal. And you have to weld in these pieces, these corner pieces, and then paint the vehicle on top of that. And so a lot of people, they won't go for the Mark 1 tail lights. And if you see one with them, then you can get, give that guy a high five because he's really cool. People like to do the Mark 1 conversion, partly because it looks cool, but mostly to impress other Mini people, because Mini people know how hard it is to get the Mark 1 conversion kit right, uh, especially with those tail lights. Now, Mark 1 has the center gauges. This one's been moved over to center gauges, but it doesn't have the exact same center gauge setup as the Mark 1s have. I'll show you more of that when we go inside. It came with this, which I can't put on the car because you need to take the bumper off in order to put this on. I'm glad it came off because this looks like a bit of a pain in the butt to take on and off, and the car wouldn't be able to sh be shipped with it on. I'm just gonna set this down here. And then so, it'll probably only give you ground clearance of about three inches or so, but gives you an extra front lip there, and it kind of fits with the the fender arches quite well. It's in really good condition and it's been painted the exact same color. The vehicle's had a full repaint, but it's the original color of the car, which is quite important. Original mini colors are way better, in my opinion. And especially because they tend to, especially at this in this era, be quite a little, well, let me re rephrase that. Different from what you would expect paint colors to be, quite unique. And usually colors you wouldn't think to paint a car. This is kind of like a darkish orange color, and darkish orange isn't the color you would think to paint the vehicle, but for some reason on minis, the colors you think would be the ugliest end up being the most memorable and the ones that look the best. The one that I had was pea soup color, and it was a terrible color, but I absolutely loved it. Okay, this car would have normally come with 12 inch wheels. They've gone down in size. Kind of a funny thing to do there. Gone down in size to the 10 inch. In my opinion, every Mini needs to have 10 inches. They look way better than the 12s, in my opinion, and the 13s that the later ones came with, especially the 10s with the really, really wide fenders. Some people call these sports pack arches. Sports pack is the official ones. These ones aren't sports pack. They're an aftermarket one. The way you can tell is because the sports packs come up to touch the light here. These ones are a little bit lower, but they are about as wide as the very final generation of the minis had for their uh, fender flares. Okay, now take a look at this. This is quite an interesting thing. See the exterior door hinges here? Those were on the Mark I minis and they're terrible but luckily this car doesn't actually have them. This is a kit that you put on the car to make it look like Mark I when it's not actually. The reason why they're terrible is because they tend to sag. This one has real door hinges in here. You can see it's the proper ones that actually work. And then the kit just looks like it has door hinges, but it's a kind of clever design because take a look at this. These move and they're on springs. And the reason why is because these wouldn't be able to look like the real ones unless they could move like that. So when you open the door, it pushes against here and it springs out. And then when you close it, the way it's... Van's coming, pardon me. The way it's supposed to work is these are supposed to spring back into the exact same location, but you can see like it just stopped there. The spring's a little bit tired, so that needs to be replaced. You put it like that, most people won't be able to tell that those aren't the official ones. And those who can will be like, wow, those are, those are cool. Neat. Okay, we did get a bit sidetracked. We went over a couple of things that uh, were out of sequence, but let's see. Center gauges, center exit exhaust, fender mirrors. Love those, by the way. 
aftermarket steering wheel, aftermarket shift knob. It doesn't say on here, but it has a short shifter, which is very important for the minis. It makes it feel much better, but you have to get one that's not too short. Otherwise, it's difficult to shift, in my opinion. Aftermarket suspension. Oh, and something else? Uh, this is neat. Attention, talking about attention to detail. So we have 10 inch wheels, but there are disc brakes inside there. These cars came stock with disc brakes, but the disc brakes that came stock on this car wouldn't fit in a 10 inch wheel. And so they had to get a new set of brakes in order to fit the disc brakes in there. Cool. Suspension is coney and you can't see the suspension in there. They could be converted to springs. They could be the standard rubber cones. I'm not too sure. They do feel like springs though to me. Okay, what else do we have? Over fenders on it, aftermarket central locking. That's weird on a Mini. Uh, toll collection box, seat covers on it. The seat covers make it look like the original Cooper seats. Uh, center gauge conversion. Okay, converted to center gauges and it's been modified so the mileage is not known. That's why we have a star next to it here. And uh, audio remote will be sent to the buyer. And then report here. I'm going to open the hood just to show you something on the report. Okay, just leave that there for now. And then go over the report. Steering wheel wear, interior one part dirty. It's really fantastically clean. Left front inner panel tear. This is something I've seen on a number of mini sheets never been able to find what exactly they mean. The inner panel is in here. I can't see any tears on that, even if I go to the underside, but it is something that is on minis. And so I'm really wondering what that is in particular. I don't think it's something that happens with accidents per se, but over time, just the pull of the chassis pulls one part apart and I don't know I'd be really interested to find out more about that as far as that, like I've driven this car it feels great and solid and nice and wonderful so uh, I don't know various scratches and dense exterior has paint wave and full repaint with a question mark I confirm yes it has been fully repainted but it is the original color as far as I can tell left and right front inner panel uh, whoa whoa rest the left and right front tire house inside one part modified probably they have been modified to fit um, the different size wheels and tires it looks really clean inside there very very nice I can't tell what they're talking about that's been modified I don't want to get run over so I'm not gonna do it on that side Okay, I cannot understand. All right, and then the party pooper of the car. There's C2 right here, and that's medium-sized corrosion. Let's have a quick look at that. Down to the base of the door. Now, I've looked around. There is a tiny, tiny bit of corrosion on the underside sill here. I'm gonna show you. Not here, that's not actually corrosion. Right here. Tiny, tiny bit. And that is the weak point of this car. But it does have bubbling on the door. The nice thing about it being on a door is doors are relatively easy to take off and respray, repair, that sort of thing. Okay, I did go once around. I'm going to do it again because I'm in love with the car. So pretty fast as far as minis go. Very good looking. With the front lip, it would look even better. The Mark 1s had something that is rare to see for conversions too, is the front windows used to be made out of two pieces of glass. I would love to see that on this car. I saw one just last week driving by. And so it used to be that instead of rolling down the windows, it would have a split here and the front would just move backwards or the back would move frontwards. So that's cool. Okay, usually they rust on the underside sill pretty badly here. This one's very clean compared to your average one. If you look down in here, very, very nice, not gummed up with undercoating. Chassis looks great. No rust at all in the sill. That's very good. Tiny little wipers, look at this. Tiny. The wipers don't work very well. There is an aftermarket controller for them, but I couldn't figure it out. 
oil leak uh, right here. If you have a Mini without an oil leak there, then there's something wrong. It's like a badge of honor. Also, it says Austin Cooper S. It's not actually a Cooper S. The Cooper S's were only made for a couple of years in the 60s. This one's probably faster than them anyway. All right, this one has the big fuel tank of the later models. There it is in there. Nice carpet. It is a bumpy floor here because underneath is stuff like your battery is in here and the spare tire. Okay, and the jack. Everything looks tidy in here. No signs of rust. It was repainted when they repainted the car, so that's good to see. Mark 1 handle here. Kings Road Mini Super Original Club. Hmm. Okay, door cards have been changed. And hardware here has been changed. And it's so weird to press a button and have it lock and unlock. But possibly because of that kit, you can't actually lock it yourself without the kit. So, kind of weird there. There is an alarm in it that's part of the kit there. And whenever you move the suspension on the car, it flashes the hazard lights. Really weird. I would personally disable that. Seats are good. Steering wheel is good. It is on the small side for a mini steering wheel. And so with the really wide tires and no power steering, it is more difficult than your average one. Let's turn the fan down here. So the AC does work rare for a mini you have a speedometer here another rare for a mini kind of thing not that rare but originally it was just your three gauges like this and so this one has these things here this is your glove box you get another one here that this gauge takes up much of the original mark ones were just these three with kind of like a round thing that holds them in probably my wife yes it is Okay, she has to wait, I'm sorry. Here's your AC unit, a magnet on a stick. Ignition in the center, that's more Mark I goodness because usually it's in the steering column here. It's way cooler to have it in here, to be honest. Okay, this one is right-hand drive like many should be. Funny thing, left-hand drives tend to be more expensive. Aftermarket dead pedal. Gauges here original style so it is the the right three gauges with the uh mileage that goes dip both ways so look this one here is like this this one here is like this and they're all like that until you get to the last one and then it's like that so kind of funny stock ashtray yeah fit one smoke in there you're supposed to be able to pop that out but it doesn't really fit in there very well okay Oh, off. Shifting is really good. I'll show you the short shifter. It, Unless you know minis, it won't look that short to you. And so here's first, here's second. So you move like uh, four, four inches or so. It's usually twice that. It's usually up here and then down here and then touch your knee. So first is always touch your friend's knee. And then third is always touch your own knee here. It's one, two, three, four. So good. Transmission shifts really nicely. There is mystery here. Don't know what that does. This one here is a defogger. That's cool to have. This one is your choke. You pull this out to rev it up higher to start it in a cold engine uh, time, like uh, when it's below freezing. It is a carbureted car, so you have to pump the gas pedal a couple of times before you start it. Okay, to get into the back seats, you pull this and that pushes this forward and then you pull this and then go up. I can't do it with one hand but I'm going to put this on my lap. Okay, these seats are reclining. They're supposed to be able to fold a little bit more forward but uh, this is how you get into the back. That's the room that you get for that. It's really not that hard to get into the back. And I have had a child's seat in the back of one of these before. Space in the back is reasonable, I would always say. 
and you get little cubbies underneath the seats here and cubbies on the sides that's where your tire is and this one has shoulder belts in the back the one that I had had no shoulder belts in the back okay I'm gonna get out but I don't want to get out the traditional way so I'm gonna go through the center here if I can Oh, maybe I can't. Yes, I can. You didn't get to see the gymnastics I had to do in order to do that. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of the video here and I hope you enjoyed this one. I love minis and everybody else should love them a little bit more. Okay, thanks for watching everyone and have a nice day.